Hey everyone, so here in Australia it's Australia Day which uh, I'm celebrating by uh, I had some barbecue with my family, did some work in the morning, now I'm having home brewed beer which is um, quite drinkable kind of. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about for the occasion was Australia Day um, and the reason why I wanted to talk about it is because it goes back to this point. Uh, a while back, um, I responded to some videos by Rocking Mystery regarding uh, postmodernism and relativism, and I guess what uh, he or many people seem to want to refer to as cultural Marxism. Although it's, I mean, Marxists, um, Marxists did, I suppose, have much the same method, but it's not just Marxists that saw the world as a constant kind of dialogue. Um, and the reason why I think it's so fitting on Australia Day is because Australia Day is a perfect illustration of um, of this concept of different narratives. So postmodernism, surrounding concepts, are all about how there is not one objective narrative or that if there is, we can't know it. Um, and in the case of Australia, there are obviously many merit narratives, but there are two major narratives. The one is the narrative that most people celebrate on Australia Day. Um, it's the flag-waving narrative. It's the narrative of um, a land discovered by heroic um, Englishmen, uh, colonized, made prosperous, um, and um, through the striving and the hard work of its people over the years becoming ever more prosperous, um, a beautiful country, a country in which uh, many good people live, and a country which we enjoy together. That's the one narrative. That's what the Australia narrative and that's the Australia narrative that gets celebrated on Australia Day. Um, it's mainly kind of a Anglo-Saxon European narrative, although nowadays it kind of is supposed to include all of the people that came later, and they're now also part of this, but obviously a lot of um, kind of people still reject that part. Um, but the second narrative is the narrative of the Aboriginal people, the people that were here first. Um, the people that before settlement were the oldest, uh, I guess, kind of isolated tribe or group of people anywhere. I think it was, what, 20,000 years Aboriginal people had lived on Australia pretty much undisturbed. Um, and they, you know, I mean, some of them refer to today as Invasion Day because today is the day where the, I guess, the the first wave of invaders came to take their country away from them. Um, today is the day where the first settlers came and then over the next hundreds of years um, through both physical violence and cultural violence um, destroyed, violently destroyed Aboriginal culture. Uh, the state took away Aboriginal children and gave them to white families and put them into um, into homes and this happened as little as um, as, as 50 years ago. Um, it's, it's a time in which uh, Aboriginal people were driven from their land and their traditional style of life was made impossible. It was a time um, and a story in which their way of life ended, became unsustainable and was completely destroyed. Their entire world basically collapsed around them whilst wave after wave of um, Europeans came and settled in their country and violated the things that were sacred to them. Now, that's a narrative that other people tell and that's real to them, especially obviously Aboriginal people because that is what they've lived. And the effects of this are still clearly visible. I mean, it's a lot worse than even in the US. I mean, the the, the, the life expectancy of Aboriginal people, um, education level, they're all horrendous. 
um, and Aboriginal people often live in kind of these uh, communities that have terrible problems of all sorts, alcoholism and so on and so forth. And I think it's pretty clear that those are all symptoms of the kind of them not, their society uh, having basically been destroyed and or hollowed out and then kind of because of the way of life collapsing, nothing else really filling that gap them basically now being in this very um, damaged and injured state. But what I think is important about those two narratives is that neither is just objectively true. I mean, there is objective truth. If you look at it as a whole um, and you somehow measured it, you could definitely say, well, this is objectively what happened. But that's not the reality that either of these groups live in. Now, if you go to an Aboriginal person, and especially one that's kind of well informed about what happened to his or her people, um, and you pile on with the standard Australia um, narrative, um, they're probably going to get pissed, or at least they're going to think you're ignorant, um, and they're going to be right, because that's not really how Australia has worked out for them. Um, and Australia has produced for the, for the Aboriginal people mainly suffering and destruction. But on the other hand, if you go to some white Australian, like whatever many generations have lived here, um, and you come at them with the Aboriginal narrative, uh, often they're going to be very defensive. They're going to reject it, um, and they're going to want to rationalize their way out of it. Because that's not their narrative. That's not what they experience. To them, Australia is about other things. To them, Australia isn't about destruction that the colonialists brought. It's about the good people that are in Australia, the cooperation and the hard work that built the big cities. And that's not an untrue narrative either. That's the thing. I think when people come at this very aggressively and say, well, Invasion Day, um, you know, this is all terrible. The problem with that is that people who don't experience that other narrative, they're going to just reject it and they're just going to be defensive. Um, and they're not, yeah, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. I th and yeah, what I think the important kind of lesson out of this is that both of these narratives are true. Both exist simultaneously. For the people that were the colonists and their ancestors who've been prospering. Um, they've lived in these communities that were happy. They've experienced, they've met a lot of good people, there's been a lot of cooperation, and this is all true. At the same time, that has come at the cost of a different group of people whose narrative um, took a turn for the worse because of the role that these new actors played in that narrative. And they're very, very much two separate kind of realities. Um, and again, it's not like they're actually separate realities as in, ooh, it's the Twilight Zone. No. But it's just for these two groups of people, um, things are just very, very, very different. Um, and so I think the solution to this isn't to reject one narrative or the other and to say this is the definitive narrative of Australia. We're going to ignore the way that other people have felt about it or the things that other people have experienced. I think the much better, the correct solution would be and the productive solution for people would be to acknowledge that both of these narratives exist, that they're both true for certain groups of people. Um, and then to figure out um, how these interactions, like first of all, whose narrative went which direction, and so it's obvious that when you look at that, you would have to say, well, I mean, this story went very nicely, and everything here uh, has been <coughs> going upward and upward, and here everything, because of this, the way that these people live their existence, went downward, so I think that's something you have to acknowledge. Um, and then you see how these things intertwine. And then you gain an understanding that it's not just as simple 
as imposing your view on the rest of society. Um, but that, that doesn't mean that your view is completely invalid either. It just means that you do have to try to understand other people's views, other people's narratives, and to be able to um, appreciate them and to be able to act fairly in regards to that. Um, and so in the Australian case, that would mean to acknowledge that whilst uh, we're, you know, if you're a white Australian, you're not a terrible person, um, that yes, white Australians and other immigrant Australians have done good things, have been good people in Australia. This did come at a huge cost to other people. And that is something that must be addressed. That is something that this other way that these other people experience the world, which is today um, quite negative, must be addressed as well. Um, and I think that's where such ideas come in. And it's not about suggesting that we're somehow living in different realities altogether or that there's no such, that, that, that only thought exists or all of that kind of baloney thing that possibly some people believe but that's not the idea behind it. The idea behind it is in fact that people can view the same world very differently based on these various factors. And I guess the last thing then is to realize well these are the two lead narratives I guess or the two biggest narratives in Australia. But the and it's probably, I mean, there would be another narrative. That would be the narrative of the recent immigrant, um, which is, again, quite different to the narrative of the, um, of the kind of whatever, 10th generation Australian. Um, but then to realize that, yes, these are kind of the lead narratives. You can probably categorize um, my individual narrative as fitting into one of these narratives or maybe spanning them. Um, but the fact is that everyone's narrative is unique. Um, yes, we all share these features, and yes, you can probably roughly group them, but we all experience our country, our life, our community um, differently. And these differences are very important, and these differences are real. They're real not because there's some physical reality to them, because we share the same physical reality, they're real because um, because that's our understanding of the world. They're real because they're in our mind that way. Um, and once you realize that there is this different narrative for every single human being, I think you can move a lot further to move away from always being quite so sure that you can completely figure out what everyone else is thinking, um, that you know what's best for everyone, that you can just approach a situation and instantly understand what's going on, because you don't, you can't. It, all of these narratives, you can get access to them, but it takes a long time, it's a long process. It's not like, um, like looking at some kind of a machine and then just assuming that every machine processes things the same way. And I think that's where, um, say, multiculturalism or postmodernism or um, various sensible forms of relativism come in. Their ideas, their philosophical ideas, um, that, that suggest to you that you should be doing that, that you should be trying that. And you can still make value judgments regarding these things where appropriate. Um, but the first thing is to realize that in fact people do experience the world in these different ways and that ultimately none of them, none of these stories is the story of physical reality. None of them is. None of them can be because we don't have the understanding um, that, that we would require to understand physical reality at every moment and to perceive the world somehow as raw physical reality. Um, and so the last thing yeah, I, I just want to say in this video is um, yeah, just to acknowledge the, the Aboriginal people um, and their rightful claim to being the original Australians 
and I hope that in the coming years um, many of their grievances can be addressed. The significant problems that Aboriginal communities in this country face um, can be addressed in terms of um, their life expectancy, so their health care and uh, job opportunities and education opportunities and so on and so forth. Also, <clears throat> we have quite a bit of racist um, stuff left in our constitution and we do not yet in our constitution acknowledge um, the Aboriginal people as the original people of Australia and so there will be probably will be efforts that will be um, bipartisan uh, regarding a referendum to change the constitution to do those things and I hope that's something that in 2012 can move forward. Anyways, I'll see you guys all later. Happy Australia Day, happy Invasion Day, and yeah, just always keep an open mind. Never think that your story is the only one out there, because it's not.